Welcome to My Forever Home, the podcast. I'm Frances Cosway and I've helped hundreds of people create forever homes. I can't wait to share the journey with you. So let's start. Hello and welcome to episode one of Your Forever Home, the podcast with your host, Frances Cosway. I thought it was pertinent that today for the very first episode that I should talk about what is a forever home? And sometimes um, people know instantly, yep, that's what I'm doing. And yes, it is my forever home. And they, they automatically call it that. And I have to admit that uh, I sort of coined the term when we were embarking on our own forever home. And uh, I kept calling it the forever home because it's like, well, I'm not leaving. Uh, so for me, I define it as a home that is a place that you definitely plan to be in for 10 plus years. I mean, I also say, you know, what is forever these days? We sort of think we're going to be somewhere and, you know, life throws us other things. And so um, I think as long as the plan is, your plan is to stay in this home long term, the mindset that you're going to be in this house in inverted commas forever, long term, That really, for me, is a forever home. And the reason I believe that forever homes are so different to a house that you may think of as short term, i.e. five years or under, or you know you're going to flip or you're renovating it cosmetically because you want to make some money on it, the mindset, the emotional buy-in and the way you go about your decisions and your choices is totally different than when you are embarking on creating a forever home. There's so many different things that you think about. There's so many different uh, ways that you make decisions. The house has to work so much harder for you because it needs to basically be able to work through all the different changes and evolutions that your family is going to go through in the time that you're going to be there. So it's not as though you move into the house and look, we're only going to be here five years. So it just has to serve us for the next five years, i.e. Um, we've got young children. It just has to serve us from the time that they're three until the time that they're, we're eight because we're going to end up going. And so our mindset is so different. The way that we view how that has to work, our house has to work in that time is really, really different. And so that is why for me, I really wanted to create a podcast and talk about with people why a forever home is different and how all the things that you need to decide on are so different. And so this forever home needs to be really, really, um, you know, practical. It needs to work really hard and be flexible because what your children need uh, when they're really little and when they're running around you and have to be very close to you is really different to when they're teenagers and they basically want to get as far away from you as possible. And that is why your house has to evolve and be flexible and adaptable throughout those needs, those changing needs of your family. So, you know, what is a forever home? It is a home that you plan to stay in. It's a home that needs to work really hard. And what I also find, not only from my own personal experience, but just with working with people, and I work with so many different people on a daily basis, and I have done for years, you know, getting their forever home right, and just the emotional buy-in, because you know this is a house you're going to stay in for such a long time, the connection you have with it is much more. Emotionally, you want to make sure that you're making decisions that are going to stand the test of time, that you're putting quality materials in there, that you're making good decisions because it's not a house that you're going to say goodbye to anytime soon. And so that's an element where I think getting the advice and getting it right is so critical because it's not as though you can say, you know, in a few years' time, well, we're going to leave here anyway, so who really cares? Or we're going to flip this property soon so we can put up with this short term. The decisions that you make, you're going to have to live with for such a long time. And if there's things that you've missed or there's choices that you've made in terms of materials that are not serving you, they're not durable enough for, 
you know, what, you know, young boys and all that sort of stuff are going to throw with you, really kids that are going to be mucking around and rollerblading around the house like my kids do. Your kids have to, your house has to stand up to all the kid, the stuff that the kids are going to throw at it. Um, and so the choices you make are really, are really um, pertinent, really important. Uh, the colour choices that you make are, are really important. In fact, all the decisions and the choices that you make are really important. Not only uh, thinking about your lifestyle and how the home and the, the whole site has to suit your lifestyle. Are you big gardeners? Um, do you need to make sure that you're growing your own food because that's a really big part of your lifestyle choice? All these sorts of things need to be taken into consideration when it is your forever home because it needs to suit your lifestyle now, but also, you know, things may change. So as an example, our lifestyle now is that, you know, our kids want to jump on the trampoline. And, you know, I sort of figured, well, they're going to be jumping on a trampoline for probably 15 years. Maybe maybe that's a push, 10 years. And so we made a very um, conscious choice that that was, was going to be an element of our garden that was going to get a lot of use not only on their own, um, as a family. Yes, I get on this trampoline with them as well when they beg me, although I broke my toe recently being on the trampoline with them. So uh, I get to get out of that for a while. But, um, you know, we made a really conscious choice that the trampoline was going to be part of our lifestyle and our kids' enjoyment and exercise for a lot of years. So it was worthwhile putting that in. And we know that when they outgrow the trampoline, Um, that we will probably put in uh, more veggie patches. Uh, That was the compromise we made, but we knew that that was going to be really uh, a really good decision for us as a family for 10 years. And so, you know, that's just not about the house. That's just about how our garden's going to be used and, um, and how our, you know, lifestyle is for the indoors and the outdoors. So the other thing that I think is really important, and I talk about this a lot, I write about this a lot, I talk about this a lot, I engage with it a lot on all my um, you know, webinars and events that I run, and that is that because it's your forever home, I really want you to forget about trends. And for me, a trend is something that you've liked recently. And if there is something that you've gravitated to for years and years and years and years, it's not a trend. It's something that you've always loved. And so what I always encourage people to do is think about a color they've always loved, a pattern that they've always loved, maybe a design aesthetic that they've always loved, which could be, you know, inspired by places that you've traveled to. And I think that if you keep gravitating back to that particular color or texture or pattern or look, you're not going to tire of it. And so the trend is absolutely irrelevant um, to you being in a forever home. And what I really encourage you to think about is not what the latest trend is, but what you've gravitated to, because it doesn't matter whether um, it's a trend or not at the moment and that you're going to create this timeless house. That's the other thing that I get asked a lot about. Oh, I want it to be timeless. Well, if you've loved this particular thing, shape, pattern, colour, whatever it is, for over 10 years, is it timeless? Yes, it's timeless to you. It doesn't have to be timeless to the market because your objective with this home is not to sell it short term anyway. And if you are creating a really flexible home and that comes down to your floor plan and being super smart with that, and that'll be another topic another day. But if you are ticking that off anyway, your home is going to be flexible for another family regardless. And things, you know, generally get renovated every 10, 15 years anyway. Although I believe that in a forever home, if you are putting things in that home and making decisions based on what you love, I don't really think that the impetus for you to renovate so frequently is going to be as high because you've surrounded yourself with what you love. And the reason I'm so passionate about that is because why would you go to so much, why would you spend so much time, money and effort on creating this house, one of the biggest projects you'll ever embark on, creating this home that you plan to live in long term, uh, only to make it like every other house that's around there. I, I really don't see the point. I think one of the most joyous occasions is when you 
open the door to this brand new home or renovation that you've created and spent so much effort creating uh, and spent so much money on it as well because one of these projects is never a cheap uh, undertaking for it only to be like everyone else's. I think the joy comes from you creating something that's enabled you to put your stamp on it and to have your personality flowing into this home because not only is it then representative of you, you're going to be much happier in it, you're going to be calmer in it, it's going to bring you joy every single day. And so as an example, when we built our forever home, and I've been in my forever home for five and a half years, uh, I didn't care. I didn't give a hoot about what anyone else thought. I didn't get other people's opinions. And that's not because it's my professional um, desire anyway. Yes, I, sorry, my professional, um, my, my profession as an interior designer, but you know, I'd ask my my husband, you know, what he thought. And he said, look, you know, I, I don't really care. You're the professional. And generally, we have a very similar aesthetic um, anyway. But I didn't care what anyone else thought because it goes against the whole reason you're building this forever home for yourself. If you're going to listen to what every other friend and, you know, Joe blogs up the roads doing and what everyone else is doing, what the magazines are doing, it's not your unique home anyway. And so why do it? So please embrace the notion that this is your home, your forever home. It's for no one else. You need to make yourself happy. So add a little bit of your own personality. In my home, I have um, always gravitated to uh, Moroccan-inspired patterns, colours, the geometrics, that Ottoman um, design. I've always loved it. And then when I went to Morocco... Uh, which is one of my most favourite countries, I became even more um, obsessed with it. Obsessed might be a bit strong, but I, I just loved it even more. I couldn't get enough of it. And so I always wanted to make sure that um, that I could have a home. And I was so excited when we started to embrace our forever home uh, design and I knew that we were doing it. I, I just loved the fact that I knew that finally, finally, we were going to stay in a home and finally I could put my stamp on it. And that was Moroccan inspired tiles. I really wanted a Tadalak finish, which which is like a Venetian polished plaster, which they use in Morocco all the time. Seamless was really outside our budget. So I chose tiles that could mimic that aesthetic as much as possible, which was almost impossible to find at the time. It's quite popular now. But that's not the reason I did it. I did it for me. And there were tiles that I've chosen in other um, in other areas of the home that are classic Patricia Urkeler tiles that have been around for over 10 years. But I've just gravitated to them time and time and time again. And so, you know, the tilers were in our house going, oh, these tiles, oh, gee, they're awful. Oh, I can't wait to get the job finished. Great. I don't mind because you're not building this house for you. You're, you're doing this tiling for me and this is my house, this is our house, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. And so please remember that it doesn't have to be um, what you're going to see in a magazine. It doesn't have to be what Joe Bloggs up the road is doing. It doesn't have to be timeless. If you're putting stuff in there that you love, it will always be timeless because you're never going to tire of it. So please embrace that. If that's the one thing you take away from today, I want that to be ish. Um, that I want you to embrace the notion that this is going to be a house that reflects you. Um, I've had clients come to me recently with, oh, we're just going to do exactly what the builder did. Um, it's, It's going to be exactly like their house and this is their forever home. And I suppose it makes me a little bit sad because then there's none of their personality coming out into this at all. It's just a carbon copy of what had been done before. And I suppose if you really love that, which I'm not really convinced that this particular person was, then, you know, that's great. You're doing it for all the right reasons. But if there's nothing in there of you, uh, I think it's a shame because there is so much effort and it's, you know, maybe a a once-in-a-lifetime project. And if it is a forever home, I suppose that it is. So embrace you, be brave. And, you know, if you're a little bit nervous how to incorporate all of that, get expert advice because it's absolutely doable. You might just need a little bit of guidance. You might just need to soundproof your ideas, have a sounding board and just make sure that it's all going to come through together, uh, come, you know, come together cohesively. So forever homes, they are for you. They're for no one else. And so 
take that away today and I look forward to uh, sharing uh, all the next things that we need to think about in your forever home. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of My Forever Home. If you're ready to renovate or build a new home and you need help to create a beautiful and functional forever home, you can book a chat with me directly at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash chat. Have a great day.